Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be going through the derivation of the geometric integral for the tangential velocity, or Jij. If you haven't already watched my Iij video, now the geometric integral for the normal velocity, because a lot of the derivation here is the same as in the Iij uh, derivation, and I will just be referencing that in this particular video. So the difference between the Iij derivation and this derivation is that instead of taking the normal derivative, we will be taking the tangential derivative of the velocity potential phi. And so for my flow around an airfoil video, we ended up with this expression for the tangential velocity on panel I, where we can see the uniform flow contribution and the source panel contribution with uh, this integral being called now Jij, and that's what we're going to solve for in this video. So before we look at the integral portion of this, we're gonna do the same thing that we did in the Iij video, which is uh, evaluate this partial derivative uh, that's inside of the integral. And so the normal form that you are used to of the derivative of a natural log is just one over x, but if the argument of a natural log is also a function of x, then we have one over f of x, df of x dx. That's just the chain rule. And so if we do that down here, we have our jij is equal to that integral from above, and we get one over f of x, where f of x is rij, so that's one over rij, and then df of x dx is drij dti, now instead of dni. So from my panel method geometry video, we know that rij is equal to this expression up here, which is just the distance between point xiyi and xjyj. And so we'll evaluate the partial derivative using the chain rule, and this partial derivative is from that natural log derivative that we took on the previous whiteboard. And so we're just taking the partial derivative of this with respect to ti. So we have one half, bring it down, keep the expression inside, and then subtract a power off, so we have negative one half. Then we'll start with this term here using the chain rule. So we have two times this term, that's this. And then the terms in here, so that's dxi dti, and dxj dti is equal to zero because they have different subscripts. And then here we have two times this, that's here. And then dyi dti and dyj dt, uh, dti is equal to zero. And so we can write the full term inside the integral, which is just this uh, with the addition of the one over rij as the following. So we have in the numerator, we have uh, two factored out from here, right? So we have two times whatever this, this, whatever was in here. And then we also have on the denominator, the one half comes down. This whole thing can come down and we'll, uh, we'll negate the uh, power. So we have this whole thing to the one half. And the one over rij, that's this thing up here, right? We'll just bring that down and that's still to a positive one half. And note that uh, a to the b times a to the c is just equal to a to the b plus c. Note that this and this are the same, so that's our a, and then b and c. So if we combine this down here, we can see that one half plus one half is just one, which is why in the denominator here, we just have whatever's inside of that square root. The twos cancel, and we end up with our jij expression being the integral of the numerator, remember the two canceled, uh, and then the denominator, which we found from this expression here, uh, dsj. And now you'll note in this equation that we still have two partial derivatives, and so we've been moving towards a result where we don't have any more partial derivatives so that we can start to integrate this. So we need to evaluate these two. And so for that, I'm going to take a look at a panel here, panel I, that's going from index k to k plus one. I'm just using k because i and j are taken up by other variables down here. Uh, and then the angle that the positive x-axis makes with the tangential vector, that's this arrow right here, ti, so the tangential vector on the ith panel, that angle is phi i. Uh, you can go back to my panel method geometry video uh, if you're confused about that. And so this makes a triangle here, and so that's blown up right here. This angle still is phi i. This is a differential move in the tangential direction, so that's dti. Differential move in the x direction, dxi. Differential move in the y direction, dyi. And we can get uh, an expression for cosine of uh, phi i and sine of phi i. So cosine of phi i is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent over hypotenuse, dxi dti. Sine of phi i is opposite over hypotenuse, opposite over hypotenuse, dyi dti. And we can just plug those straight into this equation down here. So one thing you'll note that we did in the iij video that we don't need to do here is convert 
uh, these terms up here from delta to phi. So right now they're in terms of phi, but in the IIJ video they were in terms of delta. And you can see why, because if I'm looking at a panel right here and the tangent vector is along the panel and the normal is an extra 90 degrees away from that tangent, well if you're looking at the angles, the angle from the positive x-axis to the tangent is already phi. But when we did the normal from the positive to the normal was delta. So we needed to convert from delta to phi, but because we uh, inherently used phi before, we don't need to do that extra conversion. So we're going to start by trying to simplify down the numerator first. So that's just repeated up here from the previous whiteboard. First thing we're going to do is plug in for the lowercase xj and yj into here. And so that's what you're seeing here. You see the xi minus the lowercase xj term and the lowercase yj term. Now we're going to distribute uh, this and this into uh, the bracketed terms, and we're going to group the like terms, in this case sine phi i, cos phi i, and sj. So you can see for the cos phi i term, it'll be xi minus xj, so that's this here. For the sine phi i, it'll be yi minus yj, and that's shown here. And then I'm going to um, combine all the sj terms, so that's this multiplied by this, and this multiplied by that. So we have minus sj, I factored out the sj, and then we have cosine phi i, cosine phi j, that's this. And then we have sine phi i, sine phi j, that's this. It's a plus here because even though it's a minus here, it factored out. And so when you multiply through by the negative, you get the appropriate terms. So then we're going to use the trig i identity shown here for this term right here. And because there's a plus in here, we want the bottom sign, so that's the plus here, which means it's going to be a cosine minus. And so the numerator then takes the, fo uh, the form shown down here, c times sj plus d, where c is just this term here, so we have a minus, and then whatever this got replaced as, which would be cosine of phi i minus phi j, and then d is the rest of it, and that just means it's xi minus xj cosine phi i plus yi minus yj sine phi i, and that's shown down here. And the denominator now is the same as in the IIJ video, and it'll be the same throughout all these derivation videos. Uh, and we've already simplified this down to the form of sj squared plus 2asj plus b, where a is given by this expression and b is given by this expression. And so the integral that we're trying to solve is, again, the same as the IIJ integral that we were trying to solve in the previous video, which I have a full in-depth derivation for. Uh, and this is that integral, so jij, we're integrating from zero to the panel length, that's s bar j of c s j plus d over s j squared plus 2 a s j plus b. And so up on the board right now, you can see the final form of the j i j integral. And this is the same form that I showed for my i i j. There's nothing changed about this. And this is a common form you'll see in a lot of my subsequent videos for the streamline derivation and even the vortex panel method derivations. And the a, b, c, d, and e terms are given down here. These are the same from the previous whiteboards and e is just a convenient variable defined as the square root of b minus a squared. And so the last thing to note here is that in my code I combine both the computations of the i integral and the j integral into the same function because you need the i integral for the uh, solution of the source panel strengths and the uh, j solution for the solution of the panel velocities or tangential velocities. So you need to compute them anyway, so they're in the same function, which means that when I define the solution, I say that c and d are either going to be cn and dn for normal or ct and dt for tangential. a and b are the same for both of them, so you can just keep those the same. e is the same for both of them. And that wraps up the j, i, j geometric integral uh, derivation. And thanks for watching.